Here I'm going to cover working with parameters in ANSYS. Um, let's say as an engineer you're interested in, as you change the thickness, how the maximum shear stress or some other interesting parameter changes. And you can do this manually, change the thickness in the geometry, then go and resolve and record what the, the results are, or you can automate it using parameters. The idea is that you have input parameters, and in our case it's the thickness, and we will just, in fact, change the thickness by changing the inner radius. Okay, so that's the distance from here to here. So by changing the inner radius and keeping the outer radius constant, we can change the thickness, and then we put the new geometry into the FEM code, answers in our case, and we, can, we want to get key parameters, let's say maximum shear stress, and there might be other parameters we're interested in, and um, there might be for some cases, some values of the input parameters, you might also be interested in, you know, tau contours, for instance. So I'll show you how to automate this in ANSYS using parameters. So I will go to my project from the tutorial. And I don't want to, you know, I want to keep this. I know this is uh, done very carefully. So I'll right click on static structural and say duplicate. And after the duplication happens, this uh, might take a few seconds. Um, let me rename that. I will say, I'll keep hollow cylindrical shaft parametric study. And you see it hasn't duplicated the results and I could, um, you know, I need to go and resolve. I could right click here and say update, but I'm very hesitant to hit update because I've seen students being very trigger happy with that. And sometimes you can wait a long time because you it has to update everything. So I'll go into mechanical. And once it comes up, I will just hit solve, okay? And over here, in fact, I can create the output parameters very easily. So let me go to um, this particular, actually, which one? Um, let's say sigma z theta along line. Um, so you have to, you know, if I had it over the cross section, that would have been better. Um, so go to, you know, whatever parameter, whatever contour is of interest or line. And then you can see the maximum minimum value. And if you click here, they become parameters. So if I go back to the project page, I see it has added this parametric set. And if I go in, you see output parameters. It has the tau max and tau min. And I want to see how these change when I change the inner radius. And for that, I have to go to geometry. So I'll go back here, actually this, this tab. And I will go and edit the geometry step. And I want to make this particular surface, um, you know, uh, the radius of that surface to be a parameter. So to make that, what you have to do is you have to select the surface and then select pull, and you see it it gives you the value of the, uh, the dimension, and you can make it a parameter by clicking P. And when you do that, it says group one created, and if you go into the groups tab, you might be here, so go into the groups tab, and you see it will show you that parameter when you highlight it and the current value. And I'll rename it. I'll call this R sub I. And I'll click Escape, Escape. Now if I go back to the project page and look at the parameter set, I see I have my input parameter and the output parameters. And here, retain data means it will retain all the nodal displacements too, not just these values. And if you want to save space, you know, you, you can unselect that. Um, 
so I can update it. These values are, you know, are right. Now, what I want to do is I want to change this to, let's say, point. I want to see what happens when I make this uh, point three. Okay. And when I do that, and then I have to say, um, update selected design point, and I'm not retaining the data. And you have to, and it says uh, some editors may close. I'll say yes. And then I have to wait for um, a few minutes. So once it's done, it'll bring back the editors it closed. And if I go back to that, um, this um, the parameter set uh, tab, I see it says ready now. In fact, as it's doing it, it gives you information about what it's doing and you get the new results. Now it hasn't retained the solution, so I can just look at these, these output parameters. So this is a case where I'm just getting that. But let's say I want to also get that uh, for a different value of the thickness. So what I'll do is I'll go here and I'll create a new parameter value. I'll say 0.32. And I will, I can actually ask it to retain the value. This is not necessary, um, but um, I will do that just to show you. And then again, you do the same thing. So you'll say update selected design point, yes. This takes a minute or so, and then if I go back I will see that it has the the new values. In fact, it's coming back to space claim. Okay, but now what I want to do is I want to see, you know, I want this geometry to be changed and also look at the results for that geometry, which I don't have. Uh, I don't have mechanical also open. So what I'll do is to, to get the contours, um, I'll go back here and I will say, make this current. So I'll say yes. And now if you go back and look at the geometry, you will see that, you know, it, it is, uh, it's gotten that, that smaller thickness. And if you go at the results, you'll see that everything's been updated for this thickness. So that's how we automate that that process.